his whole division up with him. You know, I, I, leadership is not just uh, you know pushing people and telling people what to do. It's leading from the front and uh, working just as hard, if not harder, than the rest of your your team. Well, in this case, Mark Bowler has a division. And uh, Mark Bowler has a strong work ethic, uh, has one of the greatest attitudes uh, towards this business, he has a tenacious attitude towards the PR program, and that's why he's going to be the, the speaker of this program along with Lloyd Ray. Uh, you know, a couple things that Mark, as you guys noticed, that's in the binder uh, that uh, he's really good at is you know PR's development and big summers. And uh, I think you know one without, that doesn't come without the other. I don't think you can have a six hundred thousand dollar summer or more unless you're almost mastered the PR program like Mr. Bullard has. I don't think you can have a lot of development unless you've mastered the PR program very similar to like Mark Bullard does. So take, uh, take the, uh, the dirt out of your ears and listen up because you're going to get the goods from Mr. Mark Bullard. Good morning. How are you guys doing? I think that's really important. If you don't have enough names, you can't get the volume out of the PR program that you want. But understand that the PR program is more than just traditional. So there's three parts. So I want y'all to interact here. It's early. You guys ready? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. All right, good. So first and most importantly, there's the traditional program. So what's number one, guys? So if you're taking notes, this is where you take notes. We're going to get into name collection. I'll model that for you. And it's pretty simple if you really think about it. So first it comes down to the traditional program. And that is the most important program. If you don't do the other two that I'm about to mention, then you can be very successful just running the traditional PR program. Okay? When it comes to the traditional program, here's a few keys to success. First off, you have to have paid callers. So what's the first thing, guys? Paid callers. You have to spend money on receptions. If you really think mentally that you're just going to get a bunch of assistant managers and that's the only way you're going to drive your PR program, I think you're dead wrong. We're the number one recruiting office in the Southwest region, and we're the number one recruiting division in the Southwest region. A lot of that has to do with this program. You have to spend the money on receptions. So startup matters. Your largest expense, period, will be in this department. PR program, and there is not a bad dollar, I would write this down, there is not a bad dollar that you can spend on the PR program. In fact, big reason why people don't get the recruiting numbers that they want is they're scared to put their chips in the middle. They think backwards, and they're not willing to invest in their business. What's more important, sending out more mailers or spending money on the PR program? They're both important, but your ERA coverage, that's where it's at. I was talking to a manager, veteran manager that's here, sent out a lot of mailers this past summer and didn't really get the results they wanted from it. And I said, oh, cool. How many receptions did you have? The answer back was not enough. Wasn't even close. So you can advertise, you can fire, you can poster, you can have all the PR names in the world, but if you don't have the coverage, you're not going to get the results. So when it comes to the traditional program, you have to have paid callers. Talk to your DD, and when you do your cap session, you'll come up with a plan that makes sense for you, but that's a big key. Secondly, with the traditional program, you do need to involve the system managers. So what do you need to do, guys? And you need to involve your system managers. I think that's a big key. The more system managers you have, the bigger it is. Kirk Ramsey, number one office in new business for the fall campaign. How many system managers do you have right now helping you out? Okay, eight to ten assistant managers. Isn't that cool? Do they make PR calls? Every week. So, and I'll put that down when it comes to AM involvement, is weekly you have your assistant managers helping out. Sometimes I think people overthink 
the assistant manager program and what they need to get accomplished. I mean, a good assistant manager, if they come in and make some sales, help do a little bit of active advertising, make some PR calls, that's a pretty good assistant manager. You should be doing most of the activities in your office. So with the traditional program, having the paid callers, making sure you have the A on help, and then next would be name collection. So what's the next part, guys? Right, so you have to get good at this. It's easy for us to mentally say, well, you know, I get 50 ahead. Well, I get 75 ahead. But do you really know your numbers? Are you really paying attention to how many you're getting? Because in your training class, if you have that one person who gave zero or that one person who gave 10, and then that you had a few people give you 50, you can't say, well, they don't count. Average 50. That's not how it works. And the more names you have, the more aggressive you can be with your PR program. And with the PR app, so I'll put another little side note here. Use the PR app. Like technology is incredible. If your office is not taking advantage of the PR app, I think that's wrong. They can argue all they want. That's not smart. You can use the PR app. You can also have them write down names, but it's a fact that if you use the app the right way, if someone's not using it, they probably don't understand it, and that's okay. But if you use it the right way, it does save time, and it can quantify the number of names that you get. I mean, we had some of our sharpest recruits this summer send over on the PR app 300 to 500 names a person. That's pretty exciting. Then you add the coverage to it. Then you add the AM health. You've got a pretty healthy PR recruiting business. You guys see what I'm talking about? Okay, let me dive into the other two, and then we're going to go through how to get a lot of names. Okay? So, secondly, would be acceptance criteria PRs. So, what's the next one, guys? And the, I think what y'all are here, it'd be real easy right now to tune out and say, oh, I know this, I've done this, but are you a master of this? That's the purpose of this, is can you master this program before you run your business? You know, how good are you? It comes back to paying attention to the numbers. You're into CBI, you know, I'm low banker, so it's, it's really hard for me to really focus on the numbers. So I don't like to do that, but I know how important that is to know the numbers and to be honest with yourself. You know, in our last staff meeting, that's one thing that we addressed is we're about to go in the January program. And we're not going to launch training class for almost a month. So if we don't get really good at acceptance criteria PRs in our office right now, then it's going to be long December. I'll probably try that. <laughs> <laughs> right? and, and we don't want that to be the case. We want to have a big January program, and we want it to be filled not with web apps and Craigslist, and we're going to have those people too, but I want my January program class to be filled with PRs. Right, people? Right? All right, so with acceptance criteria, you know, the big key is are you focused on averaging a minimum of five per person? How many of us? Five. Five. Are you getting that average? Are you getting at least five acceptance criteria? Or are you running the interview, maybe mention it, and you know, whatever happens happens. Well, give me a couple. Oh, my sharpest person that I've had in the office in a month gave me zero. <laughs> Like, do you allow that to happen? So a couple quick nuggets on acceptance criteria. At the very end of the interview, when they're filling it out, walk over, they're checking the yes-no questions. Hey, guys, when you get this for yes-no, raise your hand. Now let you know if I want you to continue. You all do this, right? Should be. So one through seven, when you get done, raise your hand. I'll let you know if I want you to continue. Go check it. You're really looking on the yes-no, see if they said they weren't interested. If they're not interested, then pull them out, get them out, they're negative, right? But then when you tell them to finish it, hey, by the way, um, if you don't mind, finish these two questions, but then if you can fill out, some of you guys have accepted sheets where you write PRs on the bottom, some on the back. So let's pretend they're on the bottom. 
So, hey, fill out the bottom completely. Hey, if you need to use your cell phone for this, that's totally fine. Okay? But that one liner, that's a nugget I would write down. Hey, fill this out. What's the keyword? Yeah, some of you got it. What keyword, guys? Okay, fill this out completely. And then when they come back to meet with you, and you're doing the post with them, do your normal post. I'm excited about Stacy's talk later about the post interview. so important to uh, show training. But with our best people, especially, they write down zero, they write down two. Quick conversation. Hey, we're excited about building the team with people like you. And look, I know you only wrote down a couple of people. And well, I don't need you to fill this whole thing out. But would you mind just taking a couple extra minutes and scrolling through your phone and write down just three more people so we can have a better chance and build the team with people like you? You're so impressive. Would you be, would you be up for that? Thanks. Every single time. What do they say? Yeah, no problem. Set them off in the side room or in the receptionist area, have them filled out, post someone else, and when you get done, you're like, hey, did you finish it up? Thank you. And what you'll find is that because you had that conversation, they don't write down three more. They want to be impressive. They end up writing down ten or filling up the whole daggum thing. So, but you have to ask for what you want. That's the key to acceptance criteria of PRs is you have, you have to ask for what you want. That's how you get the average of five names, is by paying attention to it, caring about it, and asking for what you want. And then as soon as you get done with the acceptance criteria name collection, once that interview's done, you've resolved it, immediately, where should those acceptance sheets, who should those go to? Immediately. Receptions. I know that's simple, but you'd be surprised how many offices I've visited, and they've got these acceptance sheets stacked up in some tray, it's like, what are these doing here? Oh, those are our acceptance names. What is receptions called? Oh, we're going to get to that. It should be, boom. And your receptionists love fresh names. You'll learn this. They love fresh names. So you bring them after every interview, fresh names. And here's the power of acceptance criteria PRs, by the way. Power of acceptance criteria PRs is that you get somebody really sharp, you sign them, send them for training, right? On the traditional program, you're going to get their names in training, you'll get their friends in the interviews the next week, and their friends will come training the next week, right? Acceptance criteria doesn't work that way. Acceptance criteria, you get the names, call their friends, get them set for an interview that night, or potentially the next day, sign them, you end up having friends in the same training. You talk about a powerful atmosphere, you talk about culture, Acceptance criteria PRs can really help you create an exciting atmosphere. Does that help a little bit there? All right. So the third key when it comes to PRs will be rep driven. So what's the third one, guys? Okay. Rep driven. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do rep driven PRs. There's not one way to do rep driven PRs. For example, you could do rep driven PRs on the last day of training. So when you're launching the class out, you can find some time in training, beginning, middle, end, find 30, 45 minutes to where break out and, hey, we're going to do some rep driven PRs. And another way you can do that would be advanced training one. So advanced training one, the beginning, first hour, or the last hour. I don't think when really matters, but that's another place where you can do rep driven PRs. PCs. You know, something I remember when I was a part of the Gulf Coast Kingdom, working with Dustin Marks, is he really preached every single PC that you do. Okay. The biggest key to the PC is not what's actually covered in the PC, but at the end of the PC, they need to book two demos and two PRs. Two demos and two PRs. You know, like clockwork. Two demos, two PRs. So you do the PC, and then hey, at the end, you put them all somewhere in the side office, wherever, and say, sometimes a closet, right? Hey, go sit over here, and uh, hey, you're, uh, you're done once you get, how many demos booked? Two. And then, hey, let's, let's real quick, uh, before you go book those two demos, let's go ahead and see if we can book a couple of your friends. Pull up after a while, look at the names they have, get ready to go through. Hey, who else could we get to come in? You know, hey, look through this list. Like, these are people we've called that haven't answered their phone. Oh, wow, Johnny hadn't answered the phone? Yeah, why don't we call him real quick? And then you get more PR. So, rep driven is one of those things that's additive. But it can happen in a lot of different places. It can happen at a team meeting. You know, have you ever done a PR phone jam? 
hey, I, we're going to have a huge, huge contest. You know, what if you ran a PR phone jam every week? It's tied in with your regular phone jam. People are coming up to the office to get on the what? Some people are going to call to book demos. Some people are going to call to book friends. A little bit of both. You ever thought about that? It's not just a cool idea. We do it. It's really cool. It works. So think outside the box when it comes to the PR program. Now I want to shift back to the most important part of PRs, though, guys, which is the traditional program. And it starts with, in training, nailing the name collection talk, popping beer bubbles. And you really want to make sure that you're getting a large quantity of names from your best people. I think it's easy to get a lot of names from people. But the real key is getting a lot of names from your game changers, from the high school quarterback, right? From the head cheerleader, you know, from Mr. or Miss Popular. You know, another little tip on PR is, you know, can you work the clicks? Can you work the what? Clicks. Yeah. It's, people have friends in circles. I want the band click. I want the sports click. I want the skateboard click. <coughs> I get you and all of your friends. I get you and all of your friends. Does that make sense? That is how PRs work. Because you call one of the cool kids from the skateboard click, you get the skateboard click. You call the quarterback, you call the sports people, and you got the reference from the quarterback. The person who gives the reference does impact the, the sharp people coming through the door. Yeah. Make sense? Okay. Here we go. So you've got, uh, you've got the name collection. Yours may be a little different. Things are the same style. The objective is the key. It's not so much the word. So here we go. Now I need you all to interact with me, all right? Can you all help me out? Yeah. All right, you all in my training class? One hell of a training class. <laughs> like this group. Good show to train, too. <laughs> All right. We got sample kits waiting outside. All right. Here we go. Well, guys, um, as you know, we're building a championship team here, and we already have incredible reps on our team. But in order to keep a championship team going, you need to consistently add championship people. You know, one of the reasons our office is so good is because of our personal recruiting program. Our team is full of friends of current reps on our team. I mean, we have groups of two, three, four, five, six. The, the largest group we've had in our office, I was from Cabell Brown, and he had a team of eight of his friends. I mean, he, had, he had his own team. It's kind of cool. So, uh, and different people you know from uh, school, church, I mean, different activities. So, uh, I mean, you check out our PR board over here, guys. I mean, you can see, like, Almost everyone we work with has at least one or two friends that work here. It's just kind of how it works. But I love training and working with friends of current reps on our team. So why do you think that is? Any idea? Why do you think I like working with friends of our current reps? Right, yeah. Birds of a feather flock together. So uh, you read those. So that's really good. So I know they're going to be good people, though. So and they're easier to train. They already know what the job's about. Like, I mean, Evan, you're friends with uh, Bree, right? So, I mean, you're like, all right, this training, I mean, it's ridiculous. Give me the knives. I'm going to go sell some cut goods, right? Okay, I mean, Hannah, you heard about the job through Ben, right? All right, so, so what I'm doing here is anyone in the training class who is a... Right, I'm showing evidence. Does that make sense? I just call them out. I mean, Hannah, I mean, you're friends with Ben. I mean, shoot, Ben crushed it. You're like, I mean, Mark, really? I have to sit here for an hour? Give me the damn knives. Right? So, anyways, there's your train. Nobody knows what the job's about. Uh, it's a more fun work environment. I don't know if you've ever worked with friends in other jobs, but it creates a cool atmosphere. More positive expectations. It's like, I mean, look, if Ben can do it, right, then, then I can do it, right? So, friendly competition, and here's the deal, friends, now notice I'm making direct eye contact with Hannah, she's one of my sharpest people in my training class, I'm creating competition, let's assume Ben had a good fast start, hey, friends, don't let friends sell more cut cut, right, 
And then they're just like, damn right. You're, but see, we understand it's not so much the words, it's more so the objective. What am I trying to accomplish through what I'm saying? Like, there's a reason I'm saying everything I'm saying. Okay? You guys following? Okay. And then, and most importantly, though, guys, is it saves me a lot of money. I spend thousands and thousands of dollars each year advertising for the right position. I mean, heck, this past summer, I spent over $10,000 advertising for the right position. I mean, that's crazy, isn't it? I mean, that's a lot of money. But look, instead of spending all that money on newspapers and websites and all those different ad sources, who do you think I'd rather give that money to? Who do you think I'd rather give the money to, guys? Uh, right. If you don't get the response you want, stop and ask the question again. So, yeah, I want to give it to you guys. It's like the mafia, right? Keep it in the family. Right? That's what we want to do. So, what if I told you that if you recommend someone who you thought would be good at the job, I would give you 1% off everything they sold during their fast start. Would you guys be excited about that? Yeah. You guys don't like money? You guys really not like money? Oh, yeah. All right, I'll try to do better. What if I told you that if you tell someone about the job, you start working here and you get 1% off everything they sold during their first month. Is that a little better? Y'all yeah. yeah. don't like money. <laughs> What's wrong? Do y'all like money? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try to do a little better, okay? So what if I told you if you recommend someone for the jobs, you make 1% off what they sell for two years? Yeah. yeah. Responded is the same way your training class responds. First time you do it, they're like, yeah. You'd be like, you know how you build the fast start up? You know build the fast start? First time, like, yeah. But you progressively get them more excited, right? You're doing the same thing here. So after they're like, yeah, I'll do a little better. How about a month? They're like, yeah. And then how about two? Ah. So, man, cool. That's the best I could do. And that's the way it works. So if you tell someone about the job, you'll make 1% off all of their sales. Now, it doesn't come out of their paycheck. Whose paycheck does it come out of? Yours. My paycheck. And I'm okay with that because that money would normally go towards advertising anyways. And I would much rather work with one of y'all's friends than someone we don't know. Now, we don't recommend friends for the job because we want to make money off of them. But because it gives them an awesome opportunity to have a sweet job around other jobs and maybe a class schedule. So who knows someone who doesn't have a job? So notice, guys, when I'm asking these questions, in the club. when I'm asking these questions, I like to, what do I do? I raise my hand, and that gets them to participate. That gets them into it. Very cool. Well, hey, who knows someone who hates their job? Okay, cool. All right. Who knows someone who complains they don't get enough hours? Okay, and then I make eye contact with whoever's not raising their hand. And then they always raise their hand. Go get some nuggets here. It's good. All right. So, and, hey, who knows someone who is in school and would just like the fact, uh, flexibility of actuate? Right? Okay, cool. So everyone you're thinking of, they would be great people to recommend. Now, the best part is you don't have to do anything. So if you have a smartphone, then you're going to download in just a little while a free app, and you're just going to send over the names. And if you don't have your smartphone with you, then you're just going to write down their names and numbers on a sheet. I'll pass it out, and then my receptionist do the rest. I pay seven receptions to make you more money. That's their entire job, is to earn you more money. Now, most of our, most of our reps just empty out their cell phone and write down or send over everyone they possibly know. Now, are all of your friends going to be interested in the job? Okay, so no, but it makes you look good anyways because you said nice things about them. You gave them a high recommendation. So here's how it works. Who knows someone who would be really good at the job? Okay, so Seth, 
Okay? You said you know somebody who'd be good at the job? Who would be good at the job? Okay, what's your best friend's name? Andre? Cool. So here's what would happen. Our receptionist, let's just say Audrey, would call up Andre and say, Hey Andre, your friend Seth just started working with us. We've got some openings. Would you like some more information about the job? And let's just say Andre's not interested. He's already got a job or he's just busy. Okay? So that, that's what happens. He's just not interested. Our receptionist would simply say, Hey, no big deal, Andre. Hey, have a great summer. If you're interested, keep some mind in the future. And then you know what, guys? We would never call that person again. Look, we don't want to bother your friends. Okay? In fact, if we call someone, if we talk to someone, now notice it's hidden in the script. May want to make a little side note here. Hey, we don't want to bother your friends. And if, hey, if they've been contacted, or if we talked to them the past six months, they said they're not interested, we're not going to call them. So, guys, we don't want to bother your friends. Does that make sense? Okay, good. But let's say Andre is interested. So let's say Andre says, yeah, I'd, I'd like to check it out. Our receptionist would just tell him a little bit more about the job, give him something up for an interview. Same thing, you guys remember when you talked to one of our receptionists? Do you guys remember that? Yeah. Same exact conversation, set him up for an interview. And then if Andre, Seth, gets hired, Andre gets hired, then he starts working here, you're going to make 1% off everything that he sells for the next two years. Pretty cool. And you can recommend anyone and everyone who is qualified. Okay? So to be qualified, they need to be at least 17 years of age. Okay? High school graduate if they're 17, obviously. Okay? Or older. And, uh, and, they, and that's qualified. It's pretty cool. Now, by the way, you know, we do like to focus more on local names. That's a preference. So one of the things I like to say, I'm not saying this one's right, talk to your district manager DDM, but we like to say, hey, by the way, you can recommend anyone who's local. What I mean by locals, they live within an hour of the office. Does that make sense? And for us, that keeps us from having a lot of names that get sent through the filter that are way out of town, wasting my receptionist time. Does that make sense? Personal preference. So, now again, the reason we recommend friends for the job is because we want to help build the team with the right people. It also gives them a great opportunity for personal, professional, and financial growth. But the 1%, that's pretty cool too. So I want to give you just a few examples of how much money you can make from writing down a bunch of names. So I mentioned Cavill Brown earlier, right? So Cavill did a really good job. And uh, he had a lot of success, so he was excited about telling his friends about the job. He ended up having eight friends work here just a few summers ago. What's neat about Cavill is those eight friends combined to sell a little over $300,000 worth of cut here. Now, at 1%, that means just for the summer, he earned an extra $3,000 of income. Now, what I'm doing, I'm making direct eye contact. And this is, I'm going to do this with my best person. I'm going to do because I want them to get tied in and excited about building the team. So I'm very intentional with who I'm speaking to. Right? And just right now, even though we're just role playing, it's like, I'm getting a lot of things. <laughs> so this is good. All right. We're good so far? You guys with me? Okay. So. So that's three thousand bucks. That's pretty cool. Now, guys, that was just for the summer. Do you get one percent just for the summer? No. So if you think about it, guys, he continued getting one percent for another twenty months. That's pretty cool. You know, another guy. This is the same summer, by the way. Cannon and Allen. Cannon only had six friends work here, but they combined to sell just a hair under two hundred thousand dollars worth of cut cut. So. 1%, I mean, he earned an extra 2,000 bucks. What was neat is Cannon went off to college at Ball and wasn't really selling a lot, like literally like an order a month. And he was still making 1%. I remember he got uh, he got a pretty good check. It was like 350 bucks, and it was a week in September. And he's like, hey, Mark, I got a check, and I don't know what this is for. Like, do I need to call the company? I was like, no, remember those from your PRs. Remember, you have a couple people who are still kicked by taking names. Oh, yeah. So what's neat about personal recruiting, guys, is it's residual. It's what, guys? 
Yeah, you can be off school. You can be not doing a whole lot, and you're still getting some extra cash. Who likes extra cash, by the way? All right. So, look, just to put it into perspective, having one friend work here for the summertime would pay for your gas for the whole summer. Who would like free gas? Cool. Uh, having two friends work here, that would pay for your gas and most of your meals. Who'd like free food and gas? Pretty cool. Okay. So how great that what if you were like Cannon? What if you're like Cannon? Well, let's just say let's scale it down a little bit. Let's say you only have five friends work here for the summer and they sell on average about ten thousand bucks. I mean everyone in the office sheeting for at least ten grand, dirty, dirty. So here's where you plug dirty dirty, right? So one percent of fifty thousand, that's an extra five hundred dollars of income for you for the summer. I mean think about what you would do with extra, keyword here, extra guys, $500. I mean, that would definitely pay for some books for next semester, and maybe some root beer, some, uh, some pizza too. So here's the deal, we're gonna have a contest. And I'm gonna have you send over or write down as many names as you can. If you guys are crushing it, then I'll give you some extra time to finish out your list. Now, anyone, at this point I would write on my whiteboard, Okay. Hey, anyone who sends over or writes down 50 names. And these contests are what we use to talk to your district manager, you know, about whatever contest. I don't think the specific contest is what matters. It's just the promotion is the key. All right? So anyone who sends over or writes down 50 names, you get a $500 bonus credit towards your fast start. That's a big deal. Okay? Now, Anyone who sends over writes down a hundred names. Now look, I know that's a lot of names. Okay, I know some of you don't have that many friends. That's okay. That's a key little one-liner. I don't think that's in here, but I would put it down because what happens is your popular kids, that pisses them off, and they want to show you. They want to show you that they have friends. Say, so, hey, 100 names, look, I know some of you don't have that many friends, that's okay, you'll make some. Hey, for those of you who are popular, cool. That's exactly what I say. And then the popular people are like, I'm popular, I'm cool. And they show that by sending a freak ton of names. Does that make sense? Okay, but you get a $1,000 credit towards your fast start. And uh, anyone who gets to 150 or more, we're going to bump you up to the next level. You still get the $1,000 credit. Let's say you finish up at level five. Hey, I know y'all don't even know what the fast start's all about yet, okay? But say you get to level five and you finish, you bumped up to level six. It's significantly greater than the other. Now, I want to point something out when it comes to fast start. You only pay as a manager 10% of fast start prices. How much is an ice cream scoop? Quizzing. How much? $42. Prices went up, guys. $42. All right. So $42. So that means as a manager, if you give away an ice cream scoop, how much did that cost you? $4. Oh, my God. Another tip. I want my reps to have a lot of Cutco. Because the more Cutco they have, the more they Every oh. You get that much faster credit? I get a lot of PRs. We all make a lot of money. Happy. <laughs> right? Okay. All right. Hey, one more quick story, guys. Look, don't prejudge. You never know who's going to be interested. You never know who's going to be great at the job. Okay? So there's a rep, uh, Josh Muller. Okay? One of the best reps in company history. You know, this guy has sold so much packages, over $2 million in personal career sales. And what's neat is he heard about the job through a friend. So, long story short, he ended up having a friend in training. And this friend was going through and scrolling through the app. And so I'm painting the picture of what's about to happen. Right? So, and so going through the app and got to the J's and was like, Josh, ah, he's got two jobs, he wouldn't be interested. And so, uh, all right, and they slid his name off. They didn't send his name over, right? 
So, well, the next week, another one of Josh's friends came in the train, same exercise, going through the J's. It's like, oh, he's got two jobs, he's probably going to be interested. But, and then I looked at the board on the names of the fast start credit. But, I mean, the more names I send over, the better it is for me, worth thinking things now, whatever. Set the name over. Well, what's interesting is Josh had actually quit one of his other jobs. And he was looking for some extra income, got the call. So uh, the rest is history. Josh, in his first two years, sold about a million dollars worth of Catco at 1%. That's $10,000. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, that person who didn't send the name over to this day is still pissed off. <laughs> right? But he didn't send the name. And my point is sharing this, guys. At some point, you may have one of your friends that comes through training, and the people that you're thinking about not referring, they're going to be referred. You might as well get the credit. Did y'all catch that? And then all of a sudden, they're just like, oh, okay. So the ones they weren't thinking about sending, it's like, well, I don't want to be that guy. Cool? All right, guys, so that's what we're going to do. And then at that point, it's really simple. You get some music going. You explain, all right, here's how it's going to work. Hey, open up your email. You're going to download this app. We don't use Wi-Fi. We just help them use data. If they don't have data on their phone, can use internet. That's when we give them a hand. We give them a sheet where they just write down names. And boom, they start working on the names. Tell them to edit. So this is important. Hey, guys, whenever you're working on the PR app, any names that are funky, okay? So let's say, for example, your friend John, okay, you call him like c Loke, okay, or something like that. So uh, that's cool. All you have to do is click on c Loke's name, edit it to John, okay? We're not calling c Loke, right? So it won't change it how it's in your phone. I think it's important you mention that. It won't change it how it's in your phone. It's just change it and how it sends it over to us. And go through and start your top five people that you're the closest with. Top five people that you're the closest with, like your best buds, people that you hang out with. Not necessarily they'd be the best at the job or even most interested, really just people you know the best. Okay? So start them, and once you get done sliding off anyone you don't want to send, editing the name for the star, and don't take long at all, scroll to the bottom, click submit. What's going to do is it's going to tell you how many names you sent, it's going to send me an email, the same exact thing. That's how I know how much fast start credit to give you. And then after that, we're going to work on sales rope agreements. Sound good, guys? All right, cool. Let's rock it. Play some music, get it going, and that's it. That's how you do the name collection. You're going to get a ton of names. Now, granted, y'all can probably tell I've done this talk a few times. So what I would encourage you to do is once a week, how many times a week? Once, once a week, all you have to do, what if you just, in your room, got this script out, and just out loud, just like I did right up here, you just went through it. Once a week, out loud. The key to learning is repetition. Key to learning is what? Repetition. So instead of just doing it one time or twice when you run a training that your DM allows you to do, or getting out in your office in the summer and then like, all right, I remember that talk back in November. How about it's fresh on your mind and you commit. This is the biggest part of your business. Personal recruiting. Once a week, out loud, not reading it. Because remember, it's the objectives. You've heard this before. It's not what you say, but how you say it. So you understand it. So when you get to this part of training, swag, baby. You're walking around, it's PR time. I love this part of training. Because I'm like, I'm going to get your friends. I'm going to get your friends. I don't say that. But I'm thinking that. And it doesn't matter how big your territory is. It matters how good you're, you're, you are when it comes to personal recruiting. I have people tell me before I moved to Memphis that you can't sell there. Four years running, over a million bucks, <coughs> personal recruiting. That's my message, guys. Have a great day. Wow. I thought I was, uh, you know, a little okay at the PR program. After listening to that message, I see why he's uh, one of the greatest in the company with the PR program. Um, my PR approach is really more height, you know, just kind of.
can't yell at him and get him excited and enthusiasm, but you can see why he's uh, one of the pristine managers in the company. Anyways, well, let's go ahead and uh, take five minutes and role play. Uh, five, ten minutes, uh, once each. Uh, let's uh, grab a role play partner and uh, go ahead and role play the PR approach and training. Uh, out loud, as uh, real as you can. Role play partner, one, one time each. Go.